Um, starting out. Do you want us to look at the one that's in the pack of also? Um, they're different. So, so this rules. Look at the one I put on your desk. Got it. Yeah. Um, justice for benefits is over. I asked Julie to look into that. Did you have a chance to look into that? I um, let's see, my budget, I'm over on public notices, I'm also over on services not otherwise classified, um, I'm wondering if you'll allow me to move some money to get my benefit line item to cover those costs. Sorry, can we, can we go back to the county commission sure. one? Is that one, do we need to worry about that? We do need to worry about that because you're going to go over budget. We're so, over on benefits. Is so, that, what, I don't what, what benefits, benefits do we well, use? Who's getting benefits? Who's getting benefits? Like FICA or things like that. I don't know if it's calculated wrong. I don't know if We don't have right. benefits. Right. Well, but she we would like play like FICA, FICA and Social Security. Yeah, Social right. Security. Okay. Oh. That, that, that's all lumped in the benefits. Okay. Not much Sorry, of a benefit. If I gone a few hundred bucks a <laughs> year, yeah, it's going to be a whole lot. Yeah. It shouldn't be, but. Yeah, the commission. And also, I've got five bucks in my wallet. The Justice Court um, benefit line item is also about the same problem, and I asked her to look into that one, too. So, yeah. so it board may board. be that both of those were miscalculated. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. I'm sorry. I just wanted to check those. No, you're good. And as far as you're, you're moving money from. Uh, Benefits line item to cover these other amounts are sufficient in your benefits line yes. item. Yes, I'll have access in my wages and benefits. I don't measure because of the personnel changes. Oh, that's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let's see. Um, treasurer is asking basically for the same thing, wanting to move some money from wages and benefit line items to some various line items in the uh, budget. Uh, we also have another employee that was paid off the wrong account and needs to be fixed. So these two first items more balancing the existing budget for this year, not request for a new year. Yeah, this, oh, this is, is all 2022. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, human resources, we talked about doing the Christmas party and moving some money from... Um, fund balance. Yeah, from fund balance. That will require a public hearing, which I will schedule for your next meeting, so just give me kind of a heads up. Um, Jeremy um, needs some money for Cassell for the, the accounts receivable module and also um, the contract that we signed that we're going to be paid once a year, correct? Plan? Right, that's what, that's correct. So what it is, is it's basically <clears throat> what he did there is we paid for it in advance, but it took up the first six months of next year. So that's why. That's all it is. Community development is still a mess. Um, I figure we'll probably take care of that last public hearing of the year and just clean that all up, get the revenues right, get the expenditures right. I'm assuming he's good with that. Well, the good thing is all of the, except for that first line, all the rest of those are all reimbursement lines as Correct. well. So it, they may be over, but our revenue should also right. be high. Right. And we're budgeting differently for next year. He's requested a different type of thing for next year. So hopefully we don't have this problem. Um, the sheriff, uh, we've got to move some money from the sheriff to the community development for a, a wrong employee code again for payroll. Um, so back up on the GIS, isn't that to do with, <clears throat> with um, that grant that has not come in yet? Because we have to spend it first, and then we get reimbursed for it. We have to ask Jeremy. I'm not sure. That's, that is it. The GIS. The um, Jeremy does the GIS account. Oh, I thought that was the recorder. No, she does the survey account. Okay. Ambulance. We also have some incorrect deals for payroll. We'll be fixing those. Um, benefits, that's another one I have to look at for the ambulance. They're 85% they're used. Um, public Works, Mike and Brett and I met, I don't know, a month ago, probably, and decided to request a $10,000 fund balance transfer to his equipment, supplies, and maintenance and utility accounts, $5,000 for each. 
Both, both of those line items are red over. Yeah, our utility costs have gone through the roof. Yes. Um, parks is also a mess. I have not gotten a response from Brett on how to fix the problem, but he has a budget on most of his line items in parks. Um, I'm not sure how you want to fix that. If you want me to. Do we think it's coded wrong? I don't. I think it was budget wrong. wrong. Did we transfer the. No, never mind. That was last year. And maybe a little overspending? Well, what about the fairgrounds, though? Fairgrounds, it almost seems to me like, is that from the fair? Because no, it's a separate budget. We have a fairgrounds well, it's budget. Part of the parks. But it's parks. You're right, it's part yeah. of the parks. It's a subset of but the But I parks. would assume it most looks of like the there's fairgrounds three separate would be done by now. I mean, the fair is over, most of the activities are yeah. over there. So those 85 percent hopefully will be okay, but the ones that are 112, 115 percent over. Okay, so like Robert was just asking, there's three different lines for fair runs. Yeah, and I, I need to ask Brett why there's three different ones. Are these are these seventeen percent over and eighty four dollars? It's like okay. Yeah, that's that's not a it's close. That's a small budget to begin with. Excuse me. So is there any uh, budget training? I don't think so. There is some available. for our department heads. Yes, we certainly ought to have something. Are we talking about that or next? Well, they're very well aware of what their percentages are, what they're spending, and if they're not keeping track, they're going to go over. I, no, I, I realize that, but I, I feel like in some cases um, not a whole lot of uh, research and work goes into budgeting other than just kind of a shot in the dark fixing a number to it. You know? and, and, yeah, I think the thought there, too, is that you don't, you can come up to your budget, but you cannot go over until approved prior. Not, not approved by the way, this is over budget because we were just allowed to spend the money. Right. I think that's how it works with my wife's credit card anyway. <laughs> Maybe not. That was a public comment. It was. <laughs> I know. Because <laughs> it was the last one that really concerned me because I've, I've been being told for a long time now in making decisions and, and sharing them with the rest of the council that we have excess money in that area and and now we're saying we're in the red two hundred and twenty thousand dollars because I know we based a, a trailer purchase based upon having we, excess money which one are you looking at? Oh, he's looking at the very last oh we haven't got there yet no I know because it, it's just concerning in the, oh, the, in the same yeah in the same he did. He did hold on that trailer, though. He stopped that, and we told him this doesn't look right. So that has not been purchased, and there's no intent to move forward with that because the money that he shows and what Leslie had are two different numbers. And I thought he was going to work on reconciling that, but you haven't seen anything I asked on it. A couple it. weeks ago, and there's still been nothing. Well, that's a four hundred thousand dollars swing. Yeah. yeah. You're right. Yeah. He clearly. There's Morgan High Math. <laughs> <laughs> but but is there I mean, just to follow along those lines, is there a way with the budgets that we can say you you don't have money, you can't Absolutely. spend money. Absolutely. Well I think a lot of it is mentality. They just think the government's open ended and it's not. Well, your department has to be held accountable for yeah. their budget. Well, and that's, that's a thing. And it's not that we can't move monies around for different right. reasonings like we are now. But I definitely think, that in my opinion, there shouldn't be a red one in here. They should be coming to us and saying, I, I need this, and here's why, and here's where it's going to come from. We shouldn't have any red. Is there a way that we can set it up where it, they can't go into the red? Or well, I, I have stopped paying all parks, but all bills. Totally can clear this up. Do, but 
there's no money and I have no resolution as to how to fix it, I'm not going to continue to spend money in that budget. Well, the, that's when they, the part department heads would need to come and kind petition. Of yeah. 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 And there might be good Give reasons also. There right. actually might be good reasons. I don't mean to right. yeah. push push back against the word government we do well, whatever I know, we want. I know, but, but that's the I'm mentality. sure there, there can be good reasons. But to me, I'd say every darn dime we could do. <laughs> and if we don't by chance have the money, we don't have the money. We don't spend it. You just keep covering it from fund balance. Yeah, no, I'm tired. <laughs> we gotta have that fund balance for some other things. Other than the operations of the county, right? <laughs> <laughs> Just a menial thing. I mean, it, it, <laughs> I, I don't disagree with the notion that they should be tracking their budget. They ought to be able to forecast when they're going over, and they come in on a timely basis. But there are also occasions when they're going to be hit with a surprise, and we we have a fund balance. It, I'm uncomfortable with discussions of saying there's no money when we have a, a two million dollar fund balance. Uh, you know, it's. I'm. I, I think we can put in a procedure. We can do all of that, and and ask them to come in in advance. But let's. let's well, it be doesn't a have to be. Careful. I'm just saying. <laughs> why can't they reach out to their commissioner that's over them, and say, hey, this is where I'm at. Do you mind discussing that with the other commissioners? Whatever. Yeah, or or that we've had a, in, during the budget meetings some forms where there's a request to increase and just get it filled out and completed. And hopefully 90% of the time it's in advance and we understand the basis for it. The determination. I think the... I think we know what the origin of the airport one is. Yeah, this is just going to take care of the problem. So are you asking, which ones are you wanting direction on? I'm just trying to give you a heads up for your public hearing until the next time. And I also have had permission to take any money from wages and benefits to move it a little bit. That was our agreement, but I wouldn't touch those two line items without your approval. I think especially where we're talking about taking it out to other budgets, I don't have any concerns with that. I think the concern and the reason we were worried about it was we didn't want a department head to take it from other places and throw it in there, you yeah. know, without Only knowing to come that back with the next year's budget yeah. request and saying, oh, well, we already right. have this problem. I did have a question for you, Mike, on the class being wrote from our meeting we had with Brett. My notes said move thirty thousand, but I put on the paper move sixty thousand. Do you remember? I don't remember what that was for. Well, it's to cover all of these overages. That it's from the fund balance. Yeah. Well, if we're going to move two hundred fifty thousand from fund balance. The but project. no, the, the so 60000 you're saying from the B and C fund balance. Right. Because that's a separate fund and there is some balance there. But I have two different numbers written down and I wonder if you could remember which one. I don't. Well, if you, let me see if I've got anything written down. If you've got, if you've got these, uh, all of these ones in red on that class B, that equals 30, 60, to 60000 That's a total of sixty right there. Okay. Well, then that's and that why. was probably the intent because the two fifty. So 60 was coming from B and C balance, okay. which is a separate fund, and then, and the then 250 was coming from the fund okay. balance, the so general fund balance, 60. and that's okay. the bridge match money. Okay. It wasn't to offset any budgets; it was simply for okay. match money. What are you? And what are I'm you seeing? The old, that adds up to 30. Well, you got. Line. I'm saying up to 60 because you've got the one that's on line. It's 20 dash 44. All four of those. Yeah, all four of those 60. equals 60. So you've got 30,000, 2,000, 15,000, and 13,000. Yeah, that's a total of 60. Okay, so it is 60. I just was concerned that I had 30 written numbers. I hope there's, is there 60 in the BNC road fund balance? So if you transfer 60, he's still over 15 more? No, he's under. No. Um, He'd be that that would class reverse. B that would be only, only used only used fifty eight sixteen thousand yeah. seventy five. Yeah. And 
on that move of the 250, I, I want to run that ask by cog first. Oh, right. when do you have another copy? Every month. Have you already done I thought I thought this was already done prior to this year or last year. This was what Both we were request from a while. This is what we agreed to at the beginning of this year when we talked about the fund match for the Peterson Bridge and what we were going to have to pay this year on oh, the Croydon Bridge. Oh, we've already agreed to. Yeah, so I think I think you ought to ask Cog for some money to help with our the match Croydon. next year with the Croydon Bridge project. Okay, that's my thought. I didn't realize we had agreed to the two fifty. Yeah, this was yeah, it was clear was back in what maybe January or February that's, I think when we that's first our first year. It. Yeah, it's been quite a while ago because okay. we knew it was coming. But and we did pay that. Oh, that's been moved already? Yeah. Oh. Oh, never mind. Yeah. oh no, no. You're, talking, you're talking the bridge for this Young Street Bridge project. Yes. Yes. This 250 is the Peterson Bridge oh, and sorry. Croydon yes. Bridge. You're right. Two big bridges. Yeah. <laughs> expensive bridges. Yeah, very expensive very... bridges. <laughs> um, I had a question on the Fairgrounds Capital Improvement Fund. We're $4,300 over. Is that a rollover account? It is. Okay, so we really probably shouldn't even need to worry about it. We should be fine. Okay. Well, have we had the cell tower lease come in yet on that? I have asked Kimberly. We'll have to look and see, because that's okay. a big chunk of it. I thought that it was, but I just wanted to make sure. Okay. And then just the last thing is the wind fire problem. And I still haven't heard a resolution for that. So what was the discussion that Brett had about this. Can I go backwards so, one bit? I didn't see any travel and, and training for us on here anywhere or where you're not wherever. Okay. Yeah, we've got plenty. I only put things over that were over 70 percent. Oh, okay. All right. Because the costs are higher. Yeah. 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 Yeah
<laughs> that was quick. <laughs> I, I meant I was speaking for myself. <laughs> <laughs> So you're going to prepare a budget resolution to make these changes? Unless we can straighten them out or what? Is that what you're doing, Leslie? Is if we straighten any of these out, that you'll have a budget resolution still? Yeah, you want to reach out to probably Can I, can I ask you one more question sure. since I'm the one that said I didn't have any more? <laughs> <laughs> nope, no more. <laughs> uh, in the past years when we weren't here, did did we did this same stuff have to happen? Do you, do you yes, think? But, but what's happened in the past, I, we, there's a lot more transparency with the commission now, it, I believe, because in the past, we didn't see most of this until the very end of the year, and then the clerk would go in and move stuff around in the budget, and we would just see that it balanced at the end of the year. She didn't bring all of it before us one by one like Leslie is doing. I appreciate it because well, you can yeah. see it. In yeah, motion. well, it's the only way I know how to help the departments. Yeah, because otherwise, if you don't see it, what are you going to do? Yeah. I think all's well as I am. <laughs> and it's not until it's not. <laughs> okay, if not, we've got, if there's no other questions, we've got four minutes before our regular meeting will begin, if you need to stand up. Room or stand up or eat your treat. So this, you know, here is sometimes set. that's to pay for the cell for the full year because it rotated in the next year. Did you end up okay, so it was not just for it, it's also going to the end of next year, just like the middle of next year. Like I will say process. the big bag I've got, got the my boy to be on the football. No, we didn't get that much back. <laughs> for that one right there, I just said earlier, I just got the bill. Yeah, that's for was, the, uh, the accounts receivable. Yeah, I'm not over on anything. I didn't, I didn't think so. <laughs> I didn't think so. <laughs> no, I just got this commissioner. He keeps giving me things to add. Oh, come on now. <laughs> well. What's that? Well. I have to blame somebody. I'm not going to take credit for it. Well, don't blame me for it. I'm going to have to come in and during tree issues. They wanted to do a scope of work basically, so they don't have the responsibility. So it's six hundred dollars I don't need any money or anything, but I do need a yeah, I do need a signature if you can last page. I've seen you do that earlier today. Do you have to like I told him I don't sign anything sometimes. Have you had plastic surgery? I always blame Mike like I just blamed you. That's fine. I don't mind. It should be. How you doing? You look lively today. <laughs> oh, I only cut down a full tree, two foot. Well, it looks good. You should cut down a tree every day. And uh, now I got so four more of them to cut down. At least. I'll show you my backyard sometimes. I've been chopping. We had 13 chopped down in the spring. We were still trying to chop them down. I'm going to get this one done because we're going to build it if we don't cut this one down. Better you just build a building around the tree. The tree it's got a little tree up the middle, like that's what that will be in California. Yeah, but I hate box over trees too. <laughs> I don't know if this is the clocking ones. Oh, that's what we kept them to do. We have those in our house. During the spring, we have what's called the spring side. I have serious issues. I don't know about it. Right. I'll be in the office even back. All right. That's good. Finally, putting my head up. You're done. Hey Mike, yes, sir. I don't know if you want to just mention that anybody that comes in to make sure that they sign mm -hmm. the roll. That's good. good. Well, my mouse order probably weighs 
And then you're, and there's no water source there, so you're hauling all of your water. Okay, welcome to the Morgan County Commission meeting, October 4th, 2022. I recognize all those in attendance here in person and those who are joining us online. If you have joined us in person, we'd love for you to sign in over there so we can add your name to our minutes, noting that you were here at the meeting. We will get started with an invocation or moment of reflection and the Pledge of Allegiance, and I've asked Commissioner Anderson to take care of that. Father, we're grateful for this opportunity we have to meet um, as citizens of the county and discuss county items. We're grateful for this beautiful county we live in, this beautiful valley we live in. We're grateful for the moisture that we've received recently. We're grateful for the freedoms that we enjoy, for the sacrifice that those have made for for us to enjoy the freedoms that we have. We're grateful for um, all that we have been blessed with, and I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please arise and repeat the Pledge of Allegiance after me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Commissioner Anderson. We will move to our consent items. First consent item is the approval of the September 6, 2022 meeting minutes. Are there any updates to the minutes that have not already been provided to Julie? Um, I have one. So on page 2, Public comment, subparagraph D. Michelle, if we could indicate that Michelle stated that she has experienced harassment on the board. And then in this next sentence, she has served on many volunteer committees and never experienced the harassment that she stated she has gone through. Thank you. Any other updates? Okay, seeing none, I'll look for a motion to approve the September 6, 2022 meeting minutes. I move that we approve the September 6, 2022 meeting minutes with the corrections. Second. We have a motion, a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Next consent item is the approval of the 2022 Board of Equalization Adjustments. Those have been provided in our packet. Are there any questions on these adjustments? Okay. <clears throat> Seeing no questions, I look for a motion on the 2022 Board of Equalization Adjustments. I move that we approve the uh, Board of Equalization Adjustments for the year 2022. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Okay. And then our third item is the approval of hardship applications. To the right page on that. Actually, I don't see those in the packet. Yeah. Do they? Uh, yeah, they're on page 44. They're on our 
It's the city oh, not they're, they're not, they're they're not in the right order. Okay. But thank you. And page 44 in the PDF. There were, I think, two separate ones. Mm -hmm. Okay. Through. Um, I can make a motion that we approve the two hardship applications presented. I'll second. I have a motion and a second to approve the hardship applications as presented. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Is there still time for people, or is that the end? End? That's that's it for this year, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> Uh, but they they can certainly apply for the coming years okay tax that's uh 2022 taxes okay uh commissioners declarations of conflict of interest with any items on the agenda i have a conflict with item f4 we represent cottonwood spring view and i've been involved in that project okay thank you that's been noted any others I have a conflict with um, 3I. I represent the sewer district from the engineering standpoint. Oh, okay. Also noted, thank you. Is that F3? F4 and 3I. Yeah, okay. Sorry, I didn't put the F in front, maybe. F3I. Yeah. Oh, F3I, sorry. Yes, not, yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Any the actual items. Okay, we will now move to public comment period. This is an opportunity for any members of the public that would like to address the commission. We would ask that you come to the podium, state your name, and please limit your comments to three minutes or less. On behalf of the Mountain Green Sewer Improvement District, I'd like to personally thank the commissioners for all they have done to get us funding so that we uh, don't have to raise our rates to do our plan expansion, giving us over two and a half times capacity increase over what we have right now. So thank you all very much for all you've done for the funding. Thank you. Seeing no additional public comment, we will move to a presentation. This is from Morgan City. Our mayor is here. We'd invite him to come up and share a letter that he's, this letter's been previous provide, previously provided to the commission. Um, just so you're aware, we do have it here in our packet and we received it via email as well. And welcome your comments. First off, I'd like to say that I've witnessed somebody thanking you government entity, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, so thus far in my term, I haven't experienced that. <laughs> uh, if everybody's had an opportunity to read the letter and look it over, is there you no know, sense in rehashing me reading it? Is there any questions you might have from the city end of things? I just don't know if it might be good for the public to at least hear what, okay. what you yeah, have to I, say. Yeah, I think it would be helpful for the public as well. Okay. Chair and members of the Morgan County Planning Commission, there are very few times in the history of Morgan City and Morgan County where there comes a development significant enough to Im an impact to warrant close co collaboration between the county and the city to address mutual land use concerns. The conditional use application for Como Springs, the Springs, is such a development. As you know, the Springs have been a part of both of our histories, dating all the way back to when Morgan City was incorporated. As a new plan for development is currently being contemplated by the county, the city would like to respectfully request that the commission consider the following issues of great concern to the city and the folks that both the county and the city serve.
access for patrons, the current entrance and access down Commercial Street are the most direct routes from the freeway to the Springs. This is the route that will continue to be used by patrons. The development of an access down 100 South has been suggested. The city strongly opposes this for the reasons discussed below. There is not legitimate reason for changing the lo location of the historical entrance. If the reason for the change is to avoid improving the bridge, it is a reason that should not be used to justify eliminating the historical location of the commercial street entrance and access. Negative impacts using 100 South as a main entrance to the springs imposes a number of seriously negative impacts on the city that cannot be mitigated except by changing access and entrance to its historical location. 100 South from the golf course road is not adequate for public access. It is one lane, steep, and lack sidewalk. 100 South from State Street routes traffic through the city and the residential neighborhoods. 100 South from State Street is also functioning as a parent pickup and drop off for at the elementary school, which it has not been designed for. Adding any additional traffic is a huge safety concern. The city has already put a crossing guard on the street to help the children cross the road as it is direct access to the back of the school. Additional use requirements, Morgan County Code, State Code, and our Morgan City Ordinances regarding additional use application are all aimed at, to the greatest extent possible, eliminating the negative impacts of a proposed use of the commune on the community. When new development or the redevelopment of old projects come before our body, there is an obligation to do it in the least intrusive way possible. In addition, there is much to be said for preserving long-standing historical traditions in our land uses. Accordingly, the Mayor and the City Council of Morgan City respect respectfully request that the entrance and access to Coleman Springs be maintained at its current location, bringing much-needed traffic down Commercial Street and preserving the historical nature of the Springs. Signed by me, the Mayor, and What's the, what's the width of 100 South Street? I don't have the exact width, other than I know it's not. It probably depends on where you measure it. I know it narrows down as you as you proceed towards. The pavement width or the right-of-way width? The, the right-of-way width. I mean, it looks like it's got a sidewalk on the west side. Oh, maybe on the east side as well. Both sides. Yeah, yeah both sides. Of it. Yeah, I'm getting about 66 feet. Just so measuring okay. that width if it's 66 feet that's that's a almost a minor collector size is that what it's classified on your road map uh, I didn't bring that with me other than uh, I, I know we have right, a problem in the morning it narrow the down, it down at the side so, so do you know Mike is this where they drop off and then they go uh -huh. right through here yep yep is that just an alleyway or something? It is, yeah. It's an alleyway. Now, if you if you go further this way, though, this road narrows down and the sidewalks end yeah. on both sides. Keep going up. Right there. Which goes into the full That's where it ends, ends in the road narrows. And there's the red rock. Is being proposed to come right through it's here? it's up further. It's right, right there. there. It's okay. right by your home, isn't it? <clears throat> and... Do you know, we've received a lot of correspondence about this. Yours is one piece of that correspondence. Did the city's traffic engineer look at that in terms of any kind of traffic study, intersection failure, or anything like that? I know none of the correspondence we've received from others has included that. Well, it hasn't been included yet because if, you, if we order a study before it's approved or However long we go down the, the process of this, it's, it's, it's going to be a worthless study. Well, if the county uh, wants to take the historical entrance off of uh, you know what it's been for, I don't know, I'm pretty old, and it's been long before my time, 
uh, where we go down in front of the fairgrounds and into the Como Springs. And in fact, Como Springs is the ones that uh, eliminated that entrance from their facility up 100 South. In, in the past, they there. eliminated it. What's that? In the past, they eliminated that. Yeah, yeah. that's been for several years. No, I, I, I'm just trying to understand the issue fully. I, I have to look at all of these issues in the same way. Oh, amen. And I understand we need to look for reasonably anticipated, to look to mitigate reasonably anticipated detrimental effects. That's the requirement of the statute. Um, we're also supposed to act on the basis of facts as opposed to public clamor. And if there is a study that has been done and when the application comes in maybe they've done a study if there's no counter study then that will bear upon what I how I think about this the solutions to the problem that's all that's why I said I, I sometimes I don't know if the city has an engineer or if they outsource it uh, if, if there was a study that was done it would be useful that's all I'm saying yeah, the city has an engineer and we're, we're opposed to use him, other than, than we have to kind of look back at the historical entrance to Como Springs, which has been down Commercial Street since Como was there. Uh, it's even, even road signs and such that, that direct the traffic that way. So one, one solution that I can see, and I'm having a problem with UDOT, is uh, we have another exit off onto the, the access road farther up from our exit now. Oh, the access road that runs along the highway? Getting some flack, but <coughs> starting to maybe address that issue. At least the city has a study going on next year. They're going to kind of look at those. Because everybody knows that when you come into Morgan at certain times and you turn on that interchange that we have and then you have an immediate left, after you go into the railroad tracks, that's that's a jam. It's dangerous. So that's, that's a big concern right there, that bottleneck. But, uh, it's also a concern when when moms and, or parents, I should say, some dads drop off kids, not many, but um, they're crossing that side, you know, that crosswalk to get over to that alley that was, I believe, if I remember right, it was donated by a homeowner to put access to the elementary. And we have a real problem, county and city, with anybody even even paying attention to our cross guards. We've just about lost a couple cross guards uh, just in the recent weeks, where they were they shot right through the intersection and the cross guard in the middle and stop sign up. So, is, is there any traffic control along 100 south there? Stop signs at any of these intersections that feed into it? Of 100 south? Mm -hmm. There's not a stop sign going towards Como on 100 south. They're all on the feeder roads. Okay. But there is a cross guard there and a crosswalk. Yeah, I can see the crosswalk on the image. Okay. So let's cross finger and make the county pushes for another exit the uh, school bus, uh, granite trucks, and all kinds of things. People going to the fairgrounds and go on. And it's, you know, it's not like you need to build an overpass, you just throw a little pavement down and you're there. Where they actually used to be? Is that what you're talking about? But, Heading uh, westbound? It would be going eastward. All oh, eastbound you're talking, okay. But across from that. Yeah. Well, instead of taking the <clears throat> right Oregon here. exit, go up to another exit go there and the underpass is already there, the structure's already there. Yep. In my opinion wouldn't be that big of a deal, but you know how it works with you don't. Yeah, can be difficult. But they're they're friendly up about it and they're gonna do a study over things. So. Good. Well, I appreciate any time. other questions for the mayor? Any? Good. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Yeah, mayor. We you. appreciate you. you coming Thanks. in. Thanks. Okay, we will move to action items. We'll start with action item number one, Clayton Pence, who is our animal control officer. We appreciate all that he does. Clayton is here to talk to us about dog licenses. Hello. Um, so I just...
just uh, I'm just here tonight to make a proposal. So I've reached out to several counties in, uh, in the past in the past year, uh, Summit County, Weaver County, Davis County, and they all have they all have uh, in addition to their one-year licenses and their lifetime licenses, they all have a three-year lifetime or a three-year dog license option. Uh, this being because most rabies vaccinations they last for three years, I believe. I believe with with Dr. Lott, the first rabies vaccination he gives, he he says it's only good for a year, but after that they're all good for three years. So most of these counties have a three year option and that makes it easier on people who have dollars so they're not having to come in every year and relicense their dog. So I'm proposing a three year license um, to go along with the one year and the and and the lifetime for the seniors. And um, it would be, I'm proposing that it be made available to people whose dogs are fixed. And uh, I believe this would uh, offer a couple of benefits, um, such as I think people, if they didn't have to license every year, maybe they'd have more incentive to fix their dog. You know, if they could just license it once every three years. I don't know if it'd help a pound, but it might help a little. And um, also, uh, as I stated, uh, they coincide with the rabies, so the people wouldn't have to provide a copy of the rabies every year. They just, once they got it vaccinated, they just bring it in, license their dog, give a copy of the rabies, then when the rabies expired, the license would expire about the same time, and they just come in and renew both of them. And, um, Clayton, can you remind us what the current yearly rate is? Yeah, so the current yearly rate is $8 for a fixed dog. And 16 for uh, an unfit, an unneutered or stayed dog. Uh, Zach White, the former uh, treasurer, he came, he came before the council earlier this year, and uh, it was changed for next year. It was changed to ten dollars for a fixed dog, and it'll be twenty dollars for a dog that is not fixed. And my proposal would be twenty-five dollars for a three-year tag. And is that only if they are spayed or neutered? Yes, they can only get that if they're spayed and neutered. Hmm. Um, if they're not spayed and neutered, then they'll just have to keep doing, doing it yearly. Sizes. Okay. So if, if it is spayed or neutered, you, you save five dollars over that three years. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. And so the lifetime was still. What was it? Twenty-five? I know we changed it to twenty-five, but uh, you just thought it was too much. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I still do think it's too much. Um, I mean, I think ten dollars is plenty for a lifetime tag. For some, that's what it is right now. And uh, we don't, we don't get a, a ton of lifetime licenses anyway. You know, we'll maybe get uh, twenty-five to thirty a year. It seems like. Um, uh, How do you follow up on the rabies vaccinations on a lifetime tag? So. Uh, in the past, I've, I made phone calls, um, you know, to people once the rabies vaccinations have expired. I'll just call them and say, "Hey, do you still have this dog?" And if they still have that, I'll say, "Okay, I just need to up kind of update a copy of your, of your rabies." But most people are really good. Um, most seniors are really good, and they stay on top of it, and they will bring in an updated copy of the rabies when it expires. Or um, in the past, I know, I know they send out reminders as well tell people that they need to update a copy of the rabies. So. Okay. so these are part of the fee schedule. Um, and I think in order to change the fee schedule, we would need to do a public hearing, is my understanding. Garrett, do you agree with that statement? I don't remember off the top of my head, but okay. I would say yes to err on the side of caution. I'm pretty sure so. we do. That's what we've done in the past, at least. Okay. But, yeah. um, so my thought would be, Clayton, if, if we decide to move forward with this, we would just do it on the next meeting. We'd do a public hearing to change the fee schedule. Um, now, I know that there were some other fee schedules potentially for parks and rental of the facility. And it would make sense to probably do all that at once. once. Yeah, it would. So um, I'll put, I'll that put would it be on my the suggestion then. is let's do it all together. Because I think... All Leslie was going to have it on the agenda, so I'll just I'll just prompt her on that. 
So okay. you guys didn't already change the fees for the We did, the but licenses? we're we're Chain. We did, but we're talking about if we if we adopt this, we'll need to do another fee schedule oh, okay. change, and we want to make sure we do that the appropriate way to yeah. make sure it there works. But we're talking about some fee changes on other fees in the schedule anyway, including parks and other facilities, so we might as well do it all together. Okay. Um, so if that's the case, um, Cindy said she was working on it. I think that's who's working on it in Leslie's office. Um, my suggestion would be that we have Clayton work with Cindy and Leslie and get his updates made on the same fee schedule that they intend to bring in to us. Okay. Are there any questions or comments on what I, Clayton's proposed? I just think that you still ought to raise the senior one to 20. You guys already voted and to, approved on that. To 20 instead of 25? No, instead of the 10 that he was already doing. Oh, we already, we already increased it to already, 25. Okay, 25. Yeah, because I know he had had a discussion about he thought it would be too much at 25 and 25 I'm fine with too because I fit in we've already room. raised it to that yeah, that's already yeah. done yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay good enough sounds good any other comments I appreciate you thinking about this and taking the initiative to come in and suggest it I think it's a good idea yeah, yeah, no it's a good idea so. okay thank you Clayton appreciate thank it thank you if you'll just get with Leslie and Cindy on that, they'll get your changes put on the fee schedule. Okay. Okay, Mr. Smith, uh, interlocal agreement with the Mountain Green Fire District. Yeah, so this is something that uh, Cindy and I have been working on. We've been in contact with uh, Mr. Robert Woodcock. He's the chairman of the Mountain Green Fire Protection District. And uh, this, I believe, was um, sent out yesterday with a bunch of other documentation, but I've got the copy here that I can pass around if you haven't had a chance to look at it. But basically, it's just to um, compensate the clerk's office for running their special election this November. Um, I don't. You know, I don't know all the details of how Cindy runs that, but they just charge per voter, and it compensates the clerk's office and covers all the costs of running the election. Any questions for me? No, I think that makes sense. Okay. Do you need us to, I guess you need us to approve the signing of that, right? Yeah. Okay. So we'll look for a motion on item number two, the interlocal agreement with the Mountain Green Fire District for operating their election for their board. So moved. Second. Second. Oh. Assuming that was an approval. That was, okay. that was the best way to put it, the way you said it. <laughs> okay, perfect. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Give okay. that one to Jared. Thank you, Matt. You're welcome. <laughs> Sharing the love on the second. So. Okay. Mr. Cook, discussion decision, Mountain Green Sewer Expansion Conditional Use Permit. Thank you. Um, so application number 22.045 is a conditional use permit request to expand the public utility. The Mountain Green Sewer uh, Improvement District is requesting approval of this conditional use permit to put in two new buildings, two clarifying tanks, and an aerobic digester. Uh, all of these uh, buildings and uh, improvements would be located north of uh, I-84 um, on the south side of their property, which is south of uh, Old Highway Road. Um, staff has reviewed the application and uh, has found it complete. Um, the county engineers reviewed their construction plans and found no, no problems with it, had no comments. Uh, we are uh, recommending approval. The planning commission has forwarded a positive recommendation of approval to you. Perfect. Yes. You say it's all north of the freeway, but yet in the uh, there was in that in the packet it's talking about an area north of the current facility. Is that correct? Um, if you look at their construction drawings, they that were included in your packet. Yeah. Um, there is a drawing. It's a perspective drawing that they put in. And that's what I looked at. Yep. That's north. I'm just saying it's north of the 
current facilities that are there, except for part of it that will be on the south side of the current reservoirs. Can I can I make a clarification? Yeah. Even though I'll be please. abstaining from the voting. <laughs> the document you just showed is what the structure will look like. That structure is actually below Pine View Reservoir up Ogden Canyon. Oh, right. That's a representation. That's not the location. But if you, yeah, if you go to, um, no, it's fine. If you go to number, let's see, page Blaine, 79. we got page 79. Yeah. That's where all the structures will be, and those all lie north of I-84. Okay, all right. I just wanted to be clarified because that other area north of the current ponds, I didn't know if that's where they were going to also do any additional buildings. Nope. Uh, they just, just identify that as that. a staging area, it looks like. Yeah. Okay. I wondered where that was because there's pretty similar looking buildings at Little Cottonwood Canyon, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, which canyon is that? <laughs> no mountains that close to our road. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. That's fine. <coughs> any other questions? No, I think okay. it's great. I. I do we have a representative of the applicant? I assume we do. Yeah. Bill, are you representing the, the sewer district? Is there anything you'd like to share? No, just that we appreciate uh, what you're doing. And like I said, this will give us over two and a half times the capacity we have right now to uh, continue to, to support the valley growth. And uh, I made a comment earlier about receiving ARPA funds for you to uh, not raise our taxes. Uh, what I really meant was not raise our monthly fees. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it and happy to see the project moving forward. I have a question for Bill, if I can. Sure. So in your uh, plans, your future plans for the uh, sewer district, are you anticipating all of the, I mean, <coughs> the amount that you've got currently that you, I mean, you say it's going to double the capacity. What about the tripling, the quadrupling that's occurring it sounds to me like within the city right so what we have is two phase expansion phase one is to go from 1800 equivalent residential units to 4615 okay and then phase two is to go to 9330 okay so that's so we, about the capacity there's another doubling in the future about 10 years from now is when we anticipate doing that and that's households yes that's well, and that and users. Wasatch Peaks will be included in those numbers, right? Yes, Wasatch Peaks as well as Snow Basin. Okay. And Club Med. Right. Which is part and of Snow Basin. That is Snow Basin. 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 And the Nine Springs too, right? I don't know if you've received any information on the Nine Springs project. It would, it would be in your service district area as well. Yeah. Okay. But there's no definitive numbers for that one yet. Right, right. I'm just, I'm just curious if there's plans for all this that is occurring because it's growing yeah no, we're absolutely on board we want to get ahead of the growth like uh, you guys want to do with infrastructure for this absolutely okay all right That's what I had. okay with that we'll look for a motion on item number three i move to approve the mountain green sewer improvement district expansion project conditional use permit Application number 22.045, located at 5445 West Old Highway Road, based on the findings and with the conditions listed in the staff report dated October 4th, 2022. I'll second it. A motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All abstain. Thank you. Okay. We will move on to item number four again. Mr. Cook, proposed final plot for Cottonwood Springs View Phase 7B. Thank you. Uh, this is application 22.030 of Cottonwood Springs View Phase 7B final plot. Uh, the proposal is for final plot approval for 26 single family lots along with 9.208 acres of open space. Um, it's located approximately at 6400 South Wasatch Back Drive, which is uh, in the northeast section of the Cottonwood subdivision development um, and east of the Silverton Drive uh, roadway. Uh, staff has reviewed this uh, and we uh, attached seven conditions um, for a, a, with, of approval. Uh, those stipulations were included in your staff report. Uh, the engineer has reviewed it, uh, the surveyor has reviewed it, there were no additional comments from uh, along with fire, there's no additional comments from fire. Uh, 
uh, the Planning Commission for the recommendation of approval to you uh, with these seven conditions. I have a question. On this site, you have um, an egress, the fire egress is going out into another area and I believe that area is not part of the Cottonwoods, is that correct? I believe it's another phase of the Is it? Is it a phase of the Cottonwoods, this one right here? Which well, one are you talking about? <clears throat> so, <laughs> talking about the little access the one that, that, that little that the dark one? Yeah. No, that's the access. Those folks came in and Remember that's yeah, access to another. So that's, that's what I was curious, is, is that an egress or is that an access? Because I thought there was, was uh, south of it, of that development of the, that we're looking at. Um, theirs was coming up this other little road. That's not a road. Not wide enough, is it? I think it's just I'm just curious. I'm just. Is that a road? It's not even wide enough for a road, is it? Well, it, it's an egress. And it had to be. Yeah, okay. it's an egress for the fire department. That's what I read in all the information. Yeah, and if you if you look on the plat, it's owned by Morgan County Cottonwood LLC, and and they so it's not part that wouldn't be part of the Cottonwoods. There is, there are phases south of this, phase seven. That actually six is up north and yeah six is north, but but, but eight eight and nine yeah, eight and south. nine would be south and east. But this particular access is headed to that Morgan County Cottonwood LLC property. Which is the one we approved, which is different than the part of the Cottonwoods, is that correct? It's not a part of the Cottonwood PUD. Okay. All right. Okay. So I'm just curious then, if that's not part of it, why do we have the egress going somewhere out onto somebody else's property? I think... Well, they're satisfying a contractual obligation to Morgan County Cottonwood. Okay. Just curious. Is that correct, Skyler? Yes. It, it, and I can, I can answer that. That's okay. Sorry. No problem. I appreciate it. Yeah, in addition to the contractual agreement that we have with Morgan County Cottonwood to provide them access to, I call it the east. Um, Gardner Cottonwood Creek actually owns three acres up there as well. Okay. That we have planned for a future water tank. So okay. there's two purposes for the easement going east. Okay. And we're going to make sure that it's uh, in the information I read here, it said it was going to be paved, or is it just going to be graveled, or what? Uh, that access will be graveled, a dirt road. Okay. There is going west out of the subdivision a 20 foot by emergency egress. Um, okay, where's that one at? It says emergency access parcel. It's kind of hard to see, but it's right below it, right? Yeah, right below the lots. Or right just below yeah. the lots. So it, you're, you were referring to that shape. Right. On uh -huh. the east. There's one right here. Right says here at the bottom. Emergency egress parcel. I guess oh, technically I see it. it's okay. just right on the border of this project. Okay. It was previously platted with a plat amendment in the phase 7A section. Okay. So that's actually already on the record. All right. And we're going to make sure that it, uh, according to the information, it says that the landowners are going to be made aware of whichever lots they buy that they cannot plant or develop or anything with that, correct? On the emergency egress? Process. Yes. Yes. The okay. Emergency egress will be a, a I just don't want the same problem we have with the electric trappers. Hard surface and owned by the uh, MOA. Okay. So it'll be, the size of it will be open space. No private. Any questions, any other questions for the applicant or for Josh? Is there still considered some uh, trails within this? I mean, I know you guys have had, got trails all over, and I just wondered if you're going to continue that procedure throughout the... Uh, yeah, there are um, some trails. They may not be in this packet specifically, but when we first presented Phase 7, right before the pandemic mm -hmm. occurred, 
we actually had the entirety of the phase as one phase. And given the events of the pandemic, we actually divided it in two. So with the first approval with 7A, so the property to the south, there was a landscape, park, trail plan that was submitted with that. Uh, that follows the plans that are found in the development area. Okay. I think that park looked pretty much installed. I didn't drive up to yeah, see the if the facilities the are all are. installed, the park is there, okay. the perimeter, we're just formalizing some of the landscaping around the park and the, the nature of natural trails. All right, I'm fine. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'll look for a motion on item number four. I'll make a motion to approve Cottonwood Spring View Phase 7B Subdivision Final Plat Application Number 22.030, located at approximately 6400 Wasatch Back Drive in the Mountain Green area, based on the findings listed in the staff report dated October 4th, 2022. Second. A motion and a second to approve. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Okay, we will move to our public hearing section of the meeting. Um, each of these will be a separate public hearing, and there's three of them. So we will hear from staff. If the applicant is here, we'll hear from the applicant, and then we'll go into public hearing, come back out of public hearing, back into the meeting, and then make our decision on each of these items. Josh. Let's go ahead and go forward with item number one. This is a proposed map, a zone map amendment, approximately 1.49 acres, going from RR1 and A20 to Town Center. Uh, this is allocation number 22.050, uh, the Hanselman rezone. Uh, the applicant is requesting approval to rezone their property, which is 1.49 acres in size on the south side of Old Highway Road uh, to the southeast of the Sinclair gas station uh, from RR1 and A20 zone to uh, town center. Uh, staff has reviewed the application. We have looked through the general plan. Um, the proposed rezoning is consistent with the, the general plan. Um, as such, we are recommending approval. Uh, the planning commission is forwarding to you a recommendation of approval. Okay, questions for Staff. This is on the south side of Old, Hi uh, old uh, Highway, whatever it is. One is old Highway. Old Highway. It's on the south side, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. And there's a house there currently, or there's not a house? Um, yeah, I could tell you. Yeah, there's okay. a house there currently. Okay, that's why I was curious. Okay. I'll make a motion that we adjourn the public meeting and convene a public hearing. Okay, we have a motion to adjourn the public he hearing, meeting and convene a public hearing. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Please. We are now in public hearing. Don't you have to have a second, or do you? Thank you. I skipped the second. Is there a second on that motion? Second. We all voted on. Okay, we have a second. And we've already voted. And so we're still voted, in so. favor. Okay, we're still in favor. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for keeping me straight. Here. Okay, any comments? Public comment? Okay, if not, we'll look for a motion to go back into the public meeting and adjourn the public hearing. So moved. Second. <laughs> moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No, you're good. Okay, back in the public meeting. We're on item number one under public hearings. Propose, propose zone map amendment of approximately 1.49 acres going from R1 and A22 Town Center. I'll make a motion to approve the Hanselman rezone map amendment application number 22.050, changing 1.49 acres from RR1 and A22 Town Center based on the findings listed in the staff report dated October 4th, 2022. I'll second it. A motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. We'll now move to item number two under our public hearings. This is a proposed rezone map amendment of approximately 5.91 acres going from RR1 and A20 to RM-15. Thanks. Uh, application number 22.052 is the Oslo rezone. 
the applicant uh, is requesting approval to a rezone from RR1 and A20 to, town, uh, to the RM15 uh, zoning district. The general plan designation designates this as town center. Uh, the property is located um, east of the, or west of the Sinclair between the LDS Church and the, uh, the gas station there on the north side of Old Highway Road. Staff has reviewed the application and have, have reviewed the general plan. Uh, we believe it's consistent with uh, the requirements of the general plan. Uh, as such, we are recommending approval of the rezoning to RM15, and the uh, Planning Commission also is forwarding a recommendation of approval. Josh, remind me what the RM designation is. Uh, it's multifamily. Multifamily, residential multifamily. Any questions for staff? The only question I had was, and I've already asked Debbie about it, but why didn't they go with a town center designation versus the RM15? The town center requires uh, at least 35% of commercial as well as a development agreement. Uh, they wanted to put in uh, town homes. Okay. From what I read, they're trying to make some affordable housing there. Yeah. What I understood from the Given the size of the property, probably doing a 30% commercial would be a difficult. Right, with 5.91 acres, yeah, it'd be difficult. That's one of the challenges that we have with this town center area. It would be a lot easier if it was all under one owner and they could just master plan the whole thing. But right. Without that. Okay. Any other questions for staff? No. And I assume the applicant is not here. Or is the applicant here? Yeah. Okay. If not, we'll look for a motion to go into public hearing. I'll make a motion that we adjourn the public meeting and convene a public hearing. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. We are now in public hearing. Seeing no public hearing comments, we'll look for a motion to adjourn the public hearing and reconvene the public meeting. So moved. Second. second. Motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. We'll look for a motion for item number two, proposed rezone map amendment. So is, I think I'm generally inclined to vote in favor of this. Is there any concern with moving from the town center to the RM15? I, I mean, the planning commission recommended it, so that's why I'm... Yeah, that's too much of a concern. And I, I think given the location of it where it's not... I think if it were right in the middle of the town center area, I'd be it more is. concerned about that. I think it's probably it's, it's on the perimeter, north edge, right? right? The northwest edge yeah. of what's land use planned as town center? Correct. Okay. Because it's basically, I mean, you've got, if you take that bullet, that target, and put it right around it, it just seems to me like that's a town center. If you look at the future land use map, it's right on the edge of the town center zoning. Well, and, and I, I guess well, I would say that multifamily housing is, from my perspective, a part of a town center. So that, that's why I'm not that's overly fine. concerned about it. You have your commercial elements, but what gives vibrancy to the center are the residents that live within walking distance to it. Mm -hmm. okay. Do you have a comment, Josh? Um, just the town center description. Um, so you have the land use map, but you also have a description that describes the types of uses that should go in there. And the town center uh, description says, the town center designation denotes areas suitable for a mixture of commercial employment and supporting residential uses in appropriate locations. Horizontal mixed uses would be required for master plan projects, and vertical mixed uses would be encouraged. And then it, it goes on to talk about the residential type of uses the town center category, but it does state that supporting residential uses in appropriate locations, that's why staff felt that this, this property met the general plan designation requirement. Well, and it is, in terms of transitioning uses, it's kind of between the church and at least what's currently a single family use. I don't know how long that will stay that way, but so that makes sense as well terms of your basic Euclidean zoning concepts. <laughs> <laughs> Is that part of a motion? I can make a motion if you're ready for a motion. <laughs> ready when you are. 
I move to approve the Osler rezone map amendment application number 22.052, changing 5.91 acres from RR1 and A20 to RM15 based on the findings listed in the staff report dated October 4th, 2022. Second. A motion and a second to approve the zone map amendment. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion passes. We will move to public hearing item number three. Proposed zone map amendment of approximately 11 acres going from A20 to Town Center, located approximately 5224 West Cemetery Road, Mountain Green. Okay, this Josh. is backwards in my packet, so I'm just a second. Okay. Uh, this is application number 22.053, uh, the Elbridge Rezone. They are requesting to rezone their property from A20 to uh, Town Center. It's a, a, approximately 11 acres uh, in size, and it's actually located due north of the previous application. Um, staff has reviewed the application uh, and uh, checked the conformance with the general plan, and we believe it's in line with the requirements of the general plan, and therefore we are recommending approval. The planning Commission also has forwarded a recommendation of approval. So are they? So it's immediately north. There's some interesting property shapes in this area. Are they? Are they planning on developing this together, they, or is it just coincidence that they're in front of us at the same time? I think it's coincidence. That it's and it's it's not a zoning question. I'm just wondering where the access is to the project. That, that's why I asked it. But I think that's part of the questions that they'll have to track down when they go to develop it. Uh, as part of their subdivision or as part of their commercial development that they're going to present. They haven't really explained that's what they want to do, but my understanding is they're taking access from the cemetery drive. It is interesting that it's, you could look at it as a little bit further away from the town center than this one, but yeah. yet we're, we're looking at having that be a town center zoning. So is yeah, that, although the stuff to the east would likely move into town center at some point, I would think as well. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So the road that goes to the cemetery up to their property, is that county road or is that a private road? I didn't think it was a road it, at all. I yeah, thought it was just a gravel trail. Road. It's yeah. what you pull the hearse up on <laughs> through the parking lot of the church. <laughs> well, that's on the other side. This the is, other side. This is the uh, this east is the side. one that comes off of Trapper's Loop. Oh, yeah, that's Trapper's that's Loop. just a dirt road, yeah. It's just a dirt road. I don't believe it's a county road. It certainly hasn't been established as a county road. It has never been maintained as a county road. Well, and, and the lot lines don't suggest that it's a yeah, it county not. road. Okay. So that's going to be an issue, though, the access. And, and they're going to fight a little bit with UDOT on that access, I'm sure, to Trapper's Loop, because historically UDOT has been... I mean, that's why the school doesn't access off of Trapper's Loop. Right. They're difficult to... So he might have to get together with Osler's. They may have to work something else. Although the topography there, that's a very steep little that's climb right. up to that road. So right. that would be an interesting thing. Of course, the, the zoning does not guarantee the access or anything else. That, that'll that still have to be worked out. That's true. That would be handled through the development process, either the site plan process or something. Okay, I'll make a motion that we adjourn the public meeting and convene a public hearing on this matter. I'll second it. <laughs> motion. And a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, we are now in public hearing for item number three. <coughs> Seeing no public comments for the public hearing, I'll look for a motion to adjourn the public hearing and reconvene the public meeting. I move that we go out of public hearing. Second. A motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion passes. We are now back in the public meeting and look for either comments or a motion on item number three. Can I just ask one, one question? So this Absolutely. will have to have commercial in it? It will? Yeah, 30%. 35%. Okay, all right. Commercial. But, that, but they could go all commercial. It's just a minimum of 35%. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. And right around it is on RR10. I move to approve the Eldridge Rezone Map Amendment, application number 22.053, changing 11 acres from A20 to TC based on the findings listed in the staff report dated October 4th, 2022. I'll second it. The motion and the second to approve the map amendment as noted. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Okay, we will move to our commissioner comments section, Commissioner Facco. Uh, we had a very rainy um, time at the USAC meeting, both Matt and I. Wish we could have had that amount of rain here. Two inches plus of rain. And anyway, there's a lot of things to learn there. The trails committee, or the trails board is working on uh, I mean, we got a preliminary plan. It's not complete yet. Um, they're trying to help us get to that point, which should be by our November meeting, which we will have a meeting on the, I think it's the 2nd of November in the evening. Um, so that's moving along. Um, I think if there's anything else. If there okay. is, I'll tell you next time. Sounds good. Or you can call or email or text or send That's a carrier right. pigeon, whatever you want to do. Commissioner McConnell. Uh, the YCC had a successful golf tournament in terms of their overall fundraising. It was at the Ogden Country Club. It was a beautiful day. And you had little mosquitoes that bite your hands. That's did you Did you <laughs> golf? I did golf. I even hit the ball reasonably well on some occasions, on others not so much, <laughs> which is how my golf game goes. It's very sporadic. I only play hole to hole, and you have to watch me or I'll cheat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I, the only comment I had is that the county um, commission and department heads continue our budget sessions this week, tomorrow, and Thursday for any members of the public that would like to come and enjoy that process, you're welcome to join us. That's starting at uh, 4 o'clock the next two nights. Mr. Anderson. Uh, it's a lot going on, but I don't have any public comments. I guess the only one would be um, um, we'll find a time where maybe we can meet and discuss the uh, concept plan on the fairgrounds park. Right. I think I forwarded that to all of you in that last week, so we can discuss on what we need to do moving forward with that. Um, I didn't ask ahead of time like our attorney has taught us to, but um, I'll also need to add for the closed session, um, uh, discuss purchase, exchange, or lease of real property. Well, perfect. I was, was going to ask for that too. So. Oh, great. We're on the same wavelength. Okay. Mr. Wilson. I'm uh, meeting with Melissa Freegang on, on the opioid settlement and what some of the things that we can do with that. I'll, I'll bring that back and hopefully we can use that money wisely that we get. Have Excellent. something profitable for our community. So, Excellent. not a loss. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Um, it's been requested that we move into a closed session for the discussion of purchase or disposition of real property as well as um, pending or reasonably imminent litigation. And competency of an individual. Okay, and character and competency of an, of an individual. And professional and character and competency character of an individual. And professional competency. Character and professional competency of an individual. Um, do we have a motion for that? So moved. Second. Second. Okay, this is a roll call vote. Commissioner Fackrell? Aye. Commissioner McConnell? Aye. I vote aye. Commissioner Anderson? Aye. And Commissioner Wilson? Aye. Okay, we will move into a closed session. Following the closed session, uh, we will adjourn our.